Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 741. Uh, my opponent kicked off with e4 and I went with uh, knight f6, uh, Alechen's defense. You can see it's uh, down on the list of popularity, but I, I still see it from time to time when I'm playing white. Um, let's see, so I try it out, knight f6. He plays e5, the main move. I got a knight d5. And now he goes d4, which is also the main move. And I go d6. So, so far, so good. Now he goes knight f3. I think uh, when I'm playing this with white, I usually play c4 on move 4. Uh, knight f3, this is the modern variation. And um, actually, I didn't know what the, the right move was here. And I just played knight c6, just a developing move. Um, it turns out bishop g4, or taking, or the two main moves. And I think I looked at, yeah, I looked at the bishop g4 line. So let's check that out. Bishop g4, just to show you what the standard um, <clears throat> ideas are here in the main line. He Pinning that knight, so he unpins immediately, and then e6, because I, I wouldn't have thought of this, but uh, e6 is a logical move. It allows the bishop to take back over here on d6 with the bishop instead of the pawn. As it's just another option, a way of taking back there, but comes with a free development, and, uh, and this bishop is outside the pawn chain. So that early bishop g4 idea kind of makes sense. And then castles, now bishop e7, c4 kicking the knight, and uh, knight c3, and castles. So getting out of trouble early, and um, seems like uh, this should be a playable position for black. Although white, um, as in most cases with the Alekhan's defense, white comes out of this with an advantage. Um, let's see, so I played knight c6. Um, not an unheard of move, but not the most common move here. My opponent went uh, c4. Take that back, c4. I went knight b6. And now he takes. That's, um, oh yeah, I wanted to show this one too. This is one of those positions and uh, one of those reasons why my move order was not precise. It's one of those positions where white can play e6 and it's quite good. <laughs> Pretty annoying move. If you take back with the bishop, you run into the uh, pawn fork. And so you have to take back with the pawn, and then you've got this uh, miserable pawn structure against your king. So that's why you don't play the Elechen's defense the way I did. You want to get that early bishop g4 in and e6 to prevent, uh, prevent white from playing e6. Um, okay, but let's go on with the game. Let's see, I went knight b6 here. He took instead of, um, instead of pushing, I took back. And now we get this kind of very typical position. Um, that uh, could have happened from the uh, the early c4 line because uh, white did get in the move c4 anyway and i got my knights over here and now the the two moves here are bishop g4 or bishop e7 i played bishop g4 because i knew of that idea but um well um one of the viewers commented that uh, bishop e7 was good here and i think he's right you know if i play bishop e7 and uh, and then castle then, uh, you know, I don't run into the problems I ran into in the game. In the game, I ran into a problem with that queen check, and that was, uh, uh, you know, that was because, <laughs> in addition to uh, my uh, poor calculating skills, that was also because my, my king was left on e8 as, uh, as a target. So uh, that's, that's how I can get into trouble here. Let's see. So um, I played bishop g4 here. My opponent went d5, and... Uh, and I took. And oh, and this is an interesting moment because um, I had calculated the sequence where I thought he was going to take take the knight and I would take the bishop and then he would take back with check. Let's see, I block and then he grabs a pawn over here and I would play rook b8. And I thought this was okay. And uh, it turns out it is uh, okay. White keeps an edge, but uh, black will round up this pawn. And uh, you know, I could play on. But I had better, and the reason why perhaps my opponent avoided that line is that um, after uh, after taking, let's go back to the game position, it was right here. You know, I just, I took the knight, and I was thinking he was going to take my knight uh, with the pawn with these further threats. But it turns out I have a bigger threat than taking the bishop, which is to take this pawn. Not something I thought of, but, it, you know, of course, I'm, I'm threatening the uh, undefended rook in the corner. And um, if he just attacks the uh, the bishop, I can retreat and take his pawn. And my pawn over here is, is uh, undefended. So I actually win an extra pawn this way. Let's see, the chess engine says it's best for, uh, 
for uh, white to continue taking here. And then I grab this way. And yeah, I came out of this with a pawn up, right? I grabbed an extra pawn over here. So uh, that's that's winning for black, or better for black anyway. Um, so he played bishop takes f3, uh, which was the correct move. And then I think I'm uh, okay after this. He played bishop e2, getting the bishop away from me. And now um, I should just go bishop e7. There's also a suggestion of uh, Rod, the, the viewer. And uh, yeah, that's just correct. Just play bishop e7 here, castle the next move, and continue. And uh, I have an okay position. Um, but I, uh, I overlooked this tactic. I thought this pawn was loose, but it's defended not only by the bishop, but also by the queen check. So there's two. It's actually defended by two pieces and attacked by two pieces, so it can't be taken. Anyway, I took it, <laughs> and he grabbed. And then right here, I said, why is he doing that? And I saw the queen check. So a moment too late, I ran into this. And um, it's interesting, uh, I don't usually um, see this kind of thing, because when I'm playing the white side, um, I've discovered, backing up to this point, it's often a good idea just with white to try and hold on to these pawns and then defend the c-pawn by playing b3 and just uh, you know keep black's pieces out of the center. So I'm not really familiar with this position from either side. Usually this is kind of a bad idea because it's giving up these squares that uh, black can use for his pieces. But it's, it's uh, well, it's good if I fall into this tactical trap. If I didn't, uh, if I had just played uh, um, bishop e7 here, this would be, I mean, it's still the slight opening edge for white, but uh, black is just fine here, and white has given up uh, some good squares in the center, so I, I should be okay in this position. But I ran into this tactic, and that happens often when you are uh, when you're playing an opening that you're not that familiar with. You're trying to learn a new opening. You are going to suffer some as you uh, learn the tactical motifs of the new opening, particularly in blitz, where you're not uh, taking the time to calculate everything out. Uh, of course, I had time enough to see something like that, so that's that's really just a, an excuse <laughs> for for my lack of calculating skills. But anyway, Queen A4 check and Queen D7. I looked this up. Is you know probably the best I can try here. It was a top engine choice. Um, you know, if I want to avoid losing more material and avoid moving my king, <laughs> then uh, that's uh, that's about the only thing I can play here. But it does allow White to get a simplified game by. Uh, by taking the queens off. Oh no, he can't take the queens off. That was the point, sorry. Confusing myself here, he has to. I keep the queens on, he has to grab the knight here. And now I just play on. But let's go through the next few moves. Nothing much happens. He just maintains his piece advantage, gets his pieces out, all very uh, logical play. I think my opponent played a good game here. Um, and didn't see any real uh, mistakes. But there was one tactic he missed, so I wanted to get to that point because it was kind of interesting. So it was right here after I played the ro move rook e7. He played knight g3, you know, trying to do a double attack on my queen and my uh, rook. But, uh, well, I can just take his rook with check, so it doesn't actually net white anything. But white has a tactic here, so there's a better move than knight to g3. You want to uh, think about this position for a while, see if you can figure it out. Okay, um, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away now. The answer is knight to f6 check. So the knight is uh, forking my king and queen, so I can't just uh, you know ignore it. It's a check. So, um, I mean, I could defend my rook by moving king to f8, but then I lose the queen. And I can't uh, just, uh, I can't do anything else after, I can't ignore it because my king is in check. Um, so taking the knight is, is probably the best option, but then he gets uh, a whole rook here. And, uh, you know, not only is uh, not only am I down a rook at this point, but my king side has been destroyed. So that is uh, a faster win for uh, a faster win for white. So anyway, he went knight g3, and um, I was able to escape from this by exchanging here. Let's see, he took with the queen, and then I grabbed a pawn over here. Oh, and yeah, the Seth pawn was hanging. There was a moment when he could have just grabbed that pawn, but it was no big deal. Didn't really change the evaluation that much. These pawns, I guess, I, I never got them going, so they, they don't really amount to a whole lot. Anyway, he grabbed that pawn now. 
and uh, let's go forward to the end of the game. There were some nice moments at the end too, so let's just step forward to that point. And um, right here, yeah, G6 leads to a forced mate. I mean, if I don't do something like that, the chess engine says I should bring my rip back, but of course uh, uh, that, that kind of defensive move will just uh, lose in the long run. So I was hoping to uh, stave off the mating threats for a bit and try and get something going against this king, but uh, he has a forced mate after this. And the, uh, the fastest mate after rook c8 check, king to g7, is the very nice move, uh, queen to d8. The queen here uh, keeps control of the escape square of my king. So my king is just trapped <laughs> in the corner, and the threat is uh, mate on h8 with the queen. So um, there's no good way to deal with it. Um, let's see, if I try to make uh, an escape route for my king by playing g5, still queen h8 check. King forward and rook g8 is a mate because the queen from there is still guarding this escape square and the knight is guarding those escape squares. So no escape and a nice little mating pattern. I guess I like that because it's a, it's using all of white's pieces. <laughs> it uses the queen, the rook, and the knight to uh, mate my king. Good good play. Uh, let's see. He played uh, queen f8 check and allowed my king to run around for a little bit. Queen h8 check. I actually live a little longer if I play king to e6 or king to e7, but it's it's still losing. In any case, I went king g5. That allows him to uh, set up a mate here with h4 check, followed by queen takes h6. And then, uh, well, he played um, this move. And, uh, and well, well, the mate here, it's kind of neat. I You know, the king has no squares to go to. All these are covered. Um, and the queen is covering those squares, the knight is covering that square. So yeah, the, the king has no squares to run to, and the only legal move is queen takes f3 to avoid the mate, and then rather than taking the queen back, uh, white can mate with the rook like that, because my king still has no squares to run to. If I block with the queen, the, the rook will take, and I'm still getting mated, so um, that is a uh, forced mate at that point. But anyway, after f3 check, I resigned. Um, so anyway, nice game. Good play by my opponent, and uh, hopefully I learned a few things about uh, playing the Alliance defense. See you guys later. Bye.